Good evening and welcome to Studio 10 Talks. I'm Patrick Cassidy. I'm the artistic director of Studio 10. It is so great to be here. You know, we do the show now once a month. I can't believe it. Now we're here at the end of November. And uh, simply because we're producing live theater. We've got, we've got so much going on. There's so much to talk about. But as we always do, we're going to bring on uh, the better half of this, uh, of this show. Please welcome our producer, Miss Julie Garnier. Hello, Jules. Hi, Patrick. How oh, are you? Good, 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 good. You know, because we only do the show once a month, I'm constantly going, you know, I miss Julie. Miss her. Aw, that's very kind. Yeah, we've developed a little repartee that I think kind of works, you know? Agreed, agreed. I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, where's Patrick? Why isn't he telling me who's our guest next month? Like, I'm always waiting. The only difference is you're David Letterman and I'm Paul Schaefer. That's the way it works. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> What's been going on? I know what's been going on with you. I know what you did last week. Very, very fantastic. You were in the Hollywood Christmas Parade, were you not? I was. I sang in the Hollywood Christmas Parade. It's a dream come true. What did you, <laughs> really. What did you say? Um, we wish you a Merry Christmas about 87 times. <laughs> <laughs> As you do the route and like every half a block, you like, hit play on the music again and you sing, you know, cause the song's only a minute long. So you're just repeating. I was like, Oh my God, if I don't know these lyrics by now. <laughs> do, we, do we have any photos of, of you uh, in that beautiful event? Yeah. So there's me on the red carpet. Oh my God. In yeah. the crushed burgundy velvet. Very yeah. That's, cool. that's my seasonal look. You're like a Santa et. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, this is us in the back of the convertible. Who's, and, and who's that, the gentleman in the, uh, in the pajamas? That <laughs> that's BJ Koros. He's the host of the Hollywood Moment here in LA. Oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so we got to ride in the back of a really beautiful Mustang and uh, do a lot, of, a lot of this and yeah, a lot. Yeah. Of do you know that I did this at the age of about eight, nine, ten, and eleven? With Not my, surprised with, with, with your mom. mom? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, it was either like you know the fashion show, show at like you know Macy's. We're with the kids, celebrities and their kids, and my brothers and I kind of in little scarves and hats and stuff. Or it was the Hollywood Christmas Parade. And one time we sat with sat with Santa, and I could tell that Santa was drinking. Oh, he was drinking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And yeah. you know, this is the 90th year. This this was the 90th anniversary. Wow. Nine zero. Wow. Like, yeah, I can't believe it's been going on that long. It's incredible. It's, it's no, an amazing it, legacy. No, it, it's a really cool thing. And and where does it start? What's the street they start on? And they go down, is it Hollywood Boulevard? It starts, yeah, it starts on Hollywood, like right by the, the Grauman's Theater. Oh, sure, right. And it goes all the way up uh, to Vine and then cuts over and then down Sunset. So you pass the Cynodome and like, you know, just, it's it's just a whole bunch of incredible landmarks. I want to I want to mention before before we start tonight. Um, today tonight is Giving Tuesday uh, for Studio Ten and stuff, and it's a, it's, a, it's a chance for us to raise money. So, do we have any graphics about that to, to show about that? No, no, we I never got well, any. But... Well, let me let me just mention: you can go to Studio Ten and you can donate. It's the end of the year. Please do so. Um, we we are as as everybody knows, the theater is constantly coming back, and we're constantly struggling to stay there. Things have been been good and they're starting to rise, but it's because of you guys doing that. So please give, go to studio10.org. You can donate to us um, and, and, and we need your support always, always. So thank you in advance. Um, Jules, we got a lot to a lot to cover tonight. So let's get to our guest and I will see you in a little while. Okay. Sounds good. Have a great show. Thanks, Jules. So tonight's guest, well, I think he's probably the most handsome guest that has ever done this show. I'm not kidding. The man, as Julie said in our little warm-up, he said, the guy has perfect skin, perfect skin. Gary Clayton is an American actor and singer. He is known for portraying Tanner in the 2013 Disney Channel movie, Teen Beach Movie, and its 2015 sequel, Teen Beach 2. He was seen as Link Larkin in the Hairspray Live with Javi Fierstein. Javi did this show. He did, he did uh, Garrett, you'll see on NBC and, he, and my personal favorite. Oh, yes. Uh, he's starring as Prince Philip in the panto of Sleeping Beauty and her winter night at the Pasadena Playhouse. Please welcome Mr. Garrett Clayton. Hi. 
So how do you like that? Having the best skin of anybody and the most handsome actor that's ever done this show. That is a very, that's a, I don't know if that's completely true, but I am completely flattered. Thank oh, you. it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> You're like perfection. Like, like Julie said to me, he says, he's amazing. He just wakes up. It's like, he looks like he's Photoshopped all the way and it's just him. He looks perfect all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> isn't that good? <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice thing to hear. Oh, it's great. Hey, man, it's so it's so good to see you. I know we talked about this briefly before the show, but I just have to tell the audience. So Garrett came. We we Studio Town on November fourth did a big fundraiser for uh, um, with Michael Feinstein, who did this great thing. We raised a lot of money. It was great. And and I'm in the lobby you know, doing my schmoozing back and forth. And I see this guy with perfect skin and really handsome. And I go, I know him. I know him. Right. And we say hello. And Garrett's like, I know we're, we're looking at each other. Right. And I'm looking and you were really great and incredibly polite. And then I, and then I say goodbye and I walk down the hall and one of my staff members comes up to me and says, Patrick, Garrett Clayton, the Disney star, he's here. He's here. And I said, Oh my God, I worked with him. Yeah. We did a show together and completely went, you know, brain dead. So, uh, but you remember, didn't you? I did. Well, and I love that you made one of my um, introducting credits, the Sleeping Beauty that we did together. <laughs> well, that, that was very self-serving, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna we'll talk about that. But let's let's talk about you. I, I mean, I I got to do a lot of research this week. Um, both Julie and I did, and. Um, you were born in Dearborn, Dearborn, Michigan, right? Right. How, how cold? Do you, how cold is that? Do you ever go back there? Yeah, I try and go back two, three times a year to visit family and friends whenever I get little breaks in work or if I'm already on my way back from something. And um, it's, I mean, it's cold about seven months of the year. So, yeah. uh, you know, there will be sometimes stretches of three, four months where you know it's just clouds. Um. And that's, you know, that's Michigan. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've played many of those cities. Obviously, I've played Detroit many times, East mm -hmm. Lansing. Um, it, it's cold there, man, in the, in the winter times. Oh, um, yeah. But, but great. And I, re and I read that you are, you're kind of, a, you're Lebanese, French Canadian, English, Scottish. Is that your an 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 ancestry? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, my mother's side is very European. And then my dad's side is... Um, Lebanese and what he says the other part of it is hillbilly so I don't really know what that means <laughs> Did you, was there a large sort of Lebanese or Middle Eastern community in Dearborn oh very large that's I mean it's one of the largest Middle Eastern populations in the world oh my gosh that's great wow mm -hmm. and it's I mean I've I I love my home and I love going back to visit everyone there and um yeah you have and you have siblings, Sam and Olivia. Is that true? I do. I have Sam, Olivia, Grayson, and um, Sam and Liver on my dad's side. Oh, they're such babies oh there. Oh, God. Look at you. You're a baby, too. Well, Olivia's graduating this year, so. Oh, wow. From, it's a from, reminder of how from old. From high school or from college? Uh, from high school. Wow. Wow. And all still, and all still in Michigan, yes? Um, yes. Uh, okay, so tell me, Garrett is not your real name, right? It's Gary, yeah. Oh, it is Gary. Gary Michael Clayton. That is so exactly right. What made you, what made, how did, you, what switched it or who switched it or why, why switched it to Garrett? I lived here for about, uh, it was about six, eight months in. You know, I've been here for, I think, almost 13 years now. Mm -hmm. And, I kept losing jobs because casting, you know, I, I, I would get to final callbacks and go through rounds of different auditions and the same note came, it kept coming back and that casting would say, you know, we really we're, you know, he's up for all these young projects and his name just isn't marketable. He just sounds so old on paper. And I was like, you're <laughs> sounds so old. You cast me because of my name. Oh, God. So I, um, I changed my name and then I booked a bunch of work. <laughs> that's wow. That's like a, a real kind of Hollywood story, but like, but like old Hollywood, like from the fifties. Oh, I, mean, I, the beginning of my career felt very old Hollywood. That's wild. You mm -hmm. know, that's like, 
Yeah, I was pulling 12 hour shifts at restaurants, uh, at working at this place from 5 PM to 5 AM for about two years and learning all my lines while I'm rolling silverware and being yelled at by drunk people and drunk celebrities. And it was, uh, it was crazy, but no, it was, that's a, that's a throwback. I mean, that's like John Wayne changed his name, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, Tony Curtis. I mean, a lot, a lot of people back in there, but I didn't realize that still goes on. Um, uh, and also, tell me about your, you, you were a total jock in like middle school and, and then you got to high school and you be, and that's when you discovered drama and the theater department and all that. Is that true? Yeah. I just got sick of playing sports. The rule was if I didn't like something, I had to try something new. Played about seven sports growing up and then, I, I football, boxing, soccer, gymnastics, karate, horseback ride. I, I, yeah. And then at some point I just got sick of it. I was like, I'm sick of chasing a ball and having to care about a ball. <laughs> ball. <laughs> gay, but I don't want to care about this ball anymore. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and so I, I just, I, and then I wanted to, you know, I, I started, I started working when I was about 13 and I kept getting more and more invested in it. And, by the time I got to high school, I, I just really wanted to uh, dive deeper into that. I quit the drama club when I was uh, in my sophomore year and went joined the swim team even, mm. and then went through went through a year of that, and then was like, no, I really genuinely just I want to join the drama club again. This is something I really love, and it makes me feel good and fulfilled. This was that was all it, during your high school years. Yeah. And, and did you, but, but you did, you, you didn't learn to sing then. Did you, how did you learn to sing? Did you grow up singing? Do you? I actually learned how to sing because I found out we were going to be doing beauty and the beast and I wanted a good role and I, I wanted to prove that I could do it. And so I started taking vocal lessons and I remember when the audition for the beast came up and I, they did the scenes first. And when you're, when you're young and you don't know the rules that like, if you scream, you're just won't have a voice. Yep. Yep. So I had done all the scenes with this like big beast voice that I practiced and had almost nearly lost my voice by the end of the audition. And everyone thought I just couldn't sing. And I had worked for like six or seven months with a vocal coach, like two, three times a week. And I wasn't telling anybody and then I opened my mouth and it sounded like nails on a chalkboard because I'd ripped my voice up doing this like beast voice. And so when I uh, there, I was in a club, there wasn't a lot of like, you know, there's always a plethora of people that are happy to be in tech that are guys, but there's not a lot of guys in high school who usually are you know, like comfortable getting on stage. So I kind of got lucky with that one in that they were like, well, the pieces fit the best with you in the part, but we'll have to work with you on the singing. And I was like, no, I can really sing the song. I can do this voice that I did in the audition. I can sing this song. And then I felt like I had to prove myself all over again, but it was worth it because it was actually, it turned out to be the first role I ever won an award for. So you wait, oh, so you did get cast then as the Beast. I ended up getting it uh, because the pieces fit that there was only so many guys in the club that could fill all like all the male roles. Oh, in it. I see. I see. You so, all the boxes. Exactly. Uh -huh. And so I remember I was, they had these massive boots that we got and I, they, you remember those like chunky flip flops? Yeah. And they stuffed those in there. So that way I was like six oh, <laughs> when I was on stage and it was just shoved in these massive boots. And I, I like, it, it was cool. It was great. But the yeah. other thing too about that, cause I know you're a tenor. I mean, you're like a high tenor, right? Mm -hmm. And the beast is like a, it's a real berry. So what did they do? What did you do? Did you sing it in that key? Did they raise it for you? What did you do? No, I sang it in that key. You know, it's, I, I'm lucky that I can do baritone, um, tenor one, tenor two and counter tenor. Oh, so you have that, you have that bottom too. Uh, good for you. Wow. It's, I, I just, you know, they don't, re people don't really ask for a lot of bar baritone as much anymore. None, it's very, none, like, none. Every, sing every up, sing high, sing loud. There's not yeah. a lot of like, uh, there's not, a, there's really not a lot for baritone tenor ones any, or is it tenor two? Tenor, tenor two. Tenor two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate too. It really is. I, I told, we talk about that a lot about where are the great baritone parts? Because a beautiful baritone voice is still to me, I love listening to that, but they don't write it anymore. You know, 
Thanks yeah. to Andrew Lloyd Webber when he did Superstar. Now everything is a rock tenor. Everything is a rock. Yeah. Rock, you know. I mean, um, I just finished being Pennywise in the It musical in New York, and that was the, the whole. I mean, it was I was singing, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody at the end of Act One. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So you did now. You did go to college, right? You uh, Oakland University for a yep. year. You went for a year. Yeah. How? What happened there? I um, well, I was. I mean, like I said before, I I'd already been working, and so I was getting opportunities. And I then, by that, by the end of that year, I, I had an opportunity. There was people who needed a roommate, managers who would represent me. And I was Taft Hartley and SAG, and I was I, I was in a BFA for music theater to go to New York, mm -hmm. and I was I thought to myself, well, you don't really get to choose where your opportunities come in this world. You just you either take them or you miss them. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, I mean, I have the I have enough theater experience. I will one day do shows in New York. It's just not the thing that gets to come first right now. Mm. So I um. Yeah, I, I kind of packed up. I sold everything I had, and I was hoping that it worked out. <laughs> and you did, were you not a, uh, one of your first jobs, Days of Our Lives? Yeah, that was, I, I did that on a, a talent search. Oh, look at you. Oh, look man. You. <laughs> I got kicked and slapped in, in, my fir in my first and only episode on that show. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Did you look at, how old are you in that picture? Um, I think I'm 18. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So yeah, so you were so you were like you were working already, and at, at a very early age. I was working in Chicago and Detroit. Yeah. Tell me, okay. Tell me about the Oogie Loves in the Big <laughs> Balloon Adventure. No, no, no. <laughs> what is That's... the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure? <laughs> I was a dancer in that movie. And if you go to Chaz Palminteri's scene. There he is. That's exactly right. That's, oh man, what an outfit. Look at that. And we got close-ups too. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Look at you. <laughs> that, okay. So, okay. So tell me this whole thing about this. Cause we were like, I told you, we did a lot of technical work. We were going, said, and, and Julie goes, there he is in that sweater with the checks. Uh, that's him. <laughs> so tell me about that whole thing. I, I, so I, at that point I had done a movie and then I had been auditioning for other things and I ended up in this dance audition where they were looking for 16 dancers. And I remember when I booked it and all of the other dancers were really mad because there was like people who had invested their whole life in being a dancer, which it, admittedly, like I understand people feeling frustrated if, somebody comes in out of nowhere, but you know, we're all just fighting for, for a spot, you know, and right. I was grateful to have one. So I have a lot of like mixed feelings about that job and that it really, it taught me that, you know, you have to be able to go to work and just do your job well. And if you have a good energy within yourself, you know, good people find good people. Mm -hmm. So I was really just, whether people were, uh, angry that I was there. Some of the people I was working with are like, you're not even a real dancer. And I was like, well, I'm a dancer enough to book this job with you. So, um, and then, uh, the so other people on set were like, oh, you're so fun. Let's talk. So I really just, I, that was my biggest learning experience. Cause the first movie I did, I was just a little kid, you know, I was like the precocious kid in this blue screen movie. And I got to say like snarky lines and run around. But in this, it felt like it really was my first adult circumstance and how to deal with people who have different um, different wants and needs that mm -hmm. might not align with yours and mm -hmm. how to navigate that in the workspace. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I had a lot of that too, Gary. I mean, the, the sense that, you know, I hadn't taken any formal dance training and I, I played Johnny Castle in the series of Dirty Dancing. You mm -hmm. know, and I'm, here I am playing the Patrick Swayze part and, you know, I had to study really hard. Now I went into these crash course you know, a dance classes for six weeks with the best choreographers and the best teachers. And I got, but there's, but the point is, I, and I've always said this, there's something else. It's not just about being the greatest dancer or the greatest singer or what there's a, there's an, I, I, what makes you individual and makes you Gary Clayton that people like is you. It has nothing to do if your training's not as good as this one. 
You know what I mean? It, there's, yeah. a, there's a whole s- other set of circumstances and skills that make up you. That well, is- and I, I think it was also it was an assumption because there was a lot of people who, and inevitably everyone just knows each other. Mm-hmm. And I was a, a high school student who was, I was lucky that I got to take college dance courses at Henry Ford nearby. And the teacher there who, you know, she trained Sonia from So You Think You Can Dance and a bunch of other people. She saw me in, in her, her, the first class I took with her and she goes, you have a lot of natural ability and good lines, but you, you need to know more. And I want to do that for you, but I need you to join the company and I need you to also add the jazz class to your, to your plate. Can you do that? I'll make sure you have all the tools you need. And so I was doing that simultaneously. I just, I guess I've never been one to like, feel like I'm going to over explain or insecurely explain myself. I'm like, if people want to draw assumptions because they don't know me, that's their prerogative, but I'm still going to show up and do a good job. That's right. And your work ethic is great. Great. Thanks buddy. You too. I can, and I can attest to that. And we're going to get, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, although we, we have to, we can't go without talking about um, your big movie, which is uh, Team Beach. That, was that the thing that kind of launched you, Team Beach movie? Yes, it is. So, and tell, okay, tell me that was like, what was the audition like? How did that happen? What, how, how, did, how, did, how did it come to be? Did you just go in sure. and, and it's yours? So I, it was kind of a long road in one that I didn't really know I was on at the time. I had, I, so the managers I had worked with at that time set up a general with because one of their friends worked in um, casting at Disney. And so they were like, I just want you to meet my client. We don't know if he'll fit anything you're doing, but you never know. So I met, um, her name's Leah and I love Leah uh, to this day. She's one of my favorites. And we, she just said, where are you from? What's your training? What do you do? Can you sing? Can you dance? What, what types of songs can you sing? What types of dances can you do? What's your history? Like, how do I know if there is something for you, what we, what, where we could put you? And mind you, there's, it's Disney. So you're, they're auditioning and seeing thousands of people. Mm-hmm. It's always like, it's a, in casting. It's always just like, you got to show up and do your best and hope that it works out in your favor. Right. And so they, uh, they ended up having me audition for a guest star, which, and which I, I auditioned for a bunch of guest stars and I ended up booking um, a job on this sitcom called Shake It Up. Oh, I know Shake It Up. Sure, I remember that show. Mm-hmm. And so then Disney was like, okay, so you can handle a little bit of comedy. And then they started auditioning me for different series and different movies and started trying to see if there was anything that would fit. And then I simultaneously auditioned for Teen Beach, which at the time was called Big Moves. And <laughs> then um, the there's a Zombies musical franchise that Disney has now that used to be a musical TV show. Mm-hmm. And I was auditioning for those at the same time and for Teen Beach, I auditioned for a different character. And for the Zombies TV show musical, I auditioned for this bully cheerleader. So, and then Teen Beach called me back and they said, "You're you, try try for this other character, which ended up being the one I got. And so I was auditioning for both of these like big things at the same time. And I kept going through callbacks and testing. And I was like, oh my God, this is really happening. And I I went through a few rounds of casting calls and I had to sing about seven different songs. Uh, they kept saying, come back and sing something else, come back and sing something else. And I met with the head of music and he asked me to sing. And then I came back for chemistry reads. I mean, it was really like, Crazy. you know, if you want this, you gotta, you gotta work your, you gotta prove it. And at the, it was right before Christmas break, I got a call and they said, you're not going to be a zombie cheerleader bully but you are going to be a surfer. And then I was like, oh shit, I just booked a fran- this franchise, which I didn't know was a franchise at the time. <clears throat> I just thought I booked this one, this one-off movie musical. And you, you know, there's how many movies in the world? You never know if they're even going to hit. I was just excited wow. to do a movie. And there and, you are. Yeah. Look at you. God. And then, yeah, and then it changed my life. You don't age, dude. And by the way, when you booked this Teen Beach movie, that was the beginning of, okay, I'm going to take off my shirt, right? (laughs) Here it comes. I had so many of those. The minute I took off my shirt, Garrett, all of a sudden I was taking off my shirt now on stage in the next movie. It's because you're like, they go, he's in great shape. We want to (laughs) see. 
Did you, although you did not take off your shirt when we did our little thing together. You're not wrong. I mean, I've taken off a lot more clothes than that since the time we've worked together. Me, <laughs> me too. I know. I, I don't know. Did you, what was it like though? Now, did you all of a sudden after that movie, did it just explode for you? Like a uh, teen, like idol type thing? A bit. Yeah. And I don't even know if it really registered at the time that it, that that is that way. Cause or that it was that way. I think I just, I was happy that people thought, you know, people liked the movie and that they thought it was success, you know, a successful movie. I didn't realize the the hit it would become because, you know, the, the woman who t- tracks all the ratings for everything at Disney Channel called us and she said it was the, f- it was the highest premiering movie they ever did. And it was the second most viewed movie they ever did. And like, cause they, and she, and I, we were like, well, what, what does that mean? And she said, think of it this way. High school musical premiered and they got 4 million viewers. And then it exploded after that. Your movie premiered and you had 14 million viewers. Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. Oh my. And, they, and she said the only other movie that ever got more views was high school musical, uh, was high school musical two. Wow, that's incredible, man. Well, yeah, that's like that overnight sensation. You know, it was crazy. I mean, we ended. I remember a friend of mine freaked out and sent me a newspaper from New York because they said you're on the cover of New York, uh, the art section. That you're on the cover of it, and it was that picture you just put up where my arms are out. And then we were on Good Morning America and The View, and like it was just crazy. It was crazy. Okay, so all right, so this you're gonna like. So you and I have something in common. I, if you don't know, was born into a family of teen idols, right? Oh, I know. So I'm going to let you know. I'm going to show you three people. You tell me who's the most handsome. Oh, no. There's no right answer. (laughs) (laughs) So those, if you don't know, because those are both my brothers. Yeah. Sean is in the middle. And, you know, Sean, from 1977 to 1980, was like Justin Bieber. And then, of course, David, all the way on the far left, from 1970 to 1974, he was like the Beatles. There was nobody in the, in the world at that time. So you, I'm, I'm, and, and by the way, I, you are the most handsome, just so you know. <laughs> um, uh, so... Uh, tell me, oh, I know, I know, I know. You, you worked with such a great, a great. He was a guest on this, been a great friend. You worked with Harvey. I also worked with Kristen, who was also on your show. Oh, you did too. Oh, yeah, she's she's phenomenal. What did you do with Kristen? It was Hairspray Live. Oh, that's right. She was in that too. You know, she's coming to do for us. She's coming to do her cabaret act. Really? Yeah, she's awesome. I mean, she has been so incredibly supportive to Studio Ten. And, and I called her after she did the show, I, I called her and I said, listen, you know, would you, um, you know, donate your time and come do your cabaret thing? So, yeah, she was supposed to come in, in um, was it August She got or September and she, she got ill and she, so we, we rescheduled and she's coming. Yeah. She's coming in June next year. Oh, really? Is yeah. she going to be coming to do it with Michael? I maybe we'll see. I mean, she's doing two shows. Uh, we're we're going to put the tickets on sale, I think, in March. Um, but she's she's awesome, and like I said, incredibly supportive uh, to me, and 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 of course, Studio Town. So, and then I'm going to call you and ask you, and you got. Do you have your own act? Do you have your own like show? Um, I have. I've done different iterations of things. I did a a, a trio show. Oh, cool! That I we went up the West Coast with, and then I did a solo show with, uh, which and I just mentioned Michael Orland earlier uh, in January of this year. And I know that's why I asked because I know he does uh, Kristen's show. Yeah, and so we kind of put one together quickly because I he called me last minute was like, "Hey, we need to fill a headlining spot on this job," and I know that me because we've worked together so often that we just have a whole book of things michael and i do together and he was like can you make a show in a week and i was like i maybe (laughs) did so okay so i mean what a great thing i mean so you've christy you've harvey uh kenny leon craig zay neil marin you i mean you got to and uh and was marissa and oh look at there 
Ricky Lake. I mean, what you got to do a lot. You got to work with a lot of great people. Yeah, and there's Ari right there in the green, and then Ephraim, who, you know, I mean, oh, he's just done so well, and Shahadi, who's oh my god, everyone's just doing so well. It's so nice. To, it's I, so great. It's so yeah. great. And what a great show! I want to do that. Oh, there's Harvey. Love Harvey. Oh, did you enjoy it? You must have loved that. It was a it was a magical experience, and I know one that will never. It will never, there's, there's nothing. That's the thing is I just am continuously grateful for these experiences because they feel so unique and larger than life and great. Like anytime moments like this happen, it just feels like so much bigger. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it because whether it's Teen Beach or Hairspray Live, or even I did the, you know, this, this movie about a murder, uh, someone who got murdered in the porn industry and it ended up being with uh, all these incredible, I mean, with like uh, Christian Slater and James Franco and Alicia Silverstone and Molly. And so it's just like, I'm and uh, doing theater with Al Pacino and Judith Light. It's just like these crazy things that I just, I, I'm reminded of how, how much talent there is in the world and how many wonderful people there are to work with and how grateful I am to just be included. I hear you, my friend. I told I have the same thing. There's not a day that goes by that I don't just thank God and go. I'm so grateful, so grateful. Yeah. And speaking of Judith and 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 Al Pacino, God looked away, right? First at, at the there you are. Yeah, there you are. Oh gosh, what was that like? I mean, I have to say that would be a dream of mine to work with both. Uh, well, wait a minute. I've worked with Judith. I did an episode of a television show that she did a long time ago. A series. I can't. Was it Phenom? Okay. But I, so I've worked with Judith and know her, but what was it like working with Al Pacino? It was honestly, the overall experience was that was, I felt like a student on that one in particular. Not that I don't absorb things from different jobs in general, as we all do, but this one felt different because of the, the work and how it was being approached was I thought very like fascinating and cool. Cause I, they asked me to be a part of it in earlier stages and I was developing it with them for, for over two years. Oh my gosh. And so we would do the show and then they would do a bunch of work and then we would come back, you know, Robert, Robert Allen Ackerman, um, rest in peace, uh, would. So, so good though. So good. Do, yeah. Do a bunch of work on the script, ask us to come back. We did the show again, did a bunch of work. We went to Pasadena and it was just a really, it was an eye opening experience on how on real work ethic and about keeping things fresh and, you know, never, never settling for letting the work get stale and always exploring it. It was just so cool. So, cause, cause I'm going to now get to the, so was this after us at the Pasadena playoffs or before us at the Pasadena playoffs? I believe it was after you did it after. Okay. So mm -hmm. which gets, which, which gets me to now how it was working with me. No, uh, <laughs> it's just, you and I, when we did work together, this, we, we, we've done this big build up to me going, I know him. Uh, you and I did one of the Panto sleeping beauty and her winter night with That's an incredible right. cat, Lucy Lawless and Olivia Holt. And uh, Tamara Gray, I mean, a David, Eng David Engel, oh my gosh, who's also done this show. Um, that was so much fun. It was incredible work, but it was so much fun. We did, we did like 12 shows a week, didn't we? Oh, that show, that was crazy. I will say we did it again in Houston at Tuts. Oh my gosh. And you were very missed. There was, look at you and Olivia. This is gorgeous. Love these photos. They we are very more, We have more, don't we, Jules? What else do we have? And what, I, you know, what an underrated comedian Lucy Lawless is. I know. So funny. She, she is so good at it. Hilarious. Great voice. Sharp comedic timing. Yeah. yeah. Endlessly professional. She's just, I, uh And, you know, David, I mean, I mean, there you are with Olivia. David and I, David Engel and I have done like four shows together. We did Mamma Mia together. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we've done many. I, I mean, I love David. He, although he always says he's always in a dress. But he wasn't in a moment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so maybe the end. Um, uh, actually, we have, and I don't think you've ever see, ever seen this. I have a little clip from this. So oh take a look at this, Mr. Clayton. 
I would like to meet Aurora. Not yet, you can. Why? Well, it's bad luck to see the princess before the dance. And it's not royal protocol. You see, the dance must take place at the couple's very first meeting. I see. Then I must return to my father. But you've only just arrived. Well, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I've forgotten his gift to you. A Ooh. gift? Yes! Oh. A large sack of gold coins. Gold oh. coins! Oh, that is thoughtful. May I present, meeting for the very first time, Aurora and her prince. Seen that. I thought you might like that, huh? How did you get that? <laughs> you were terrific, man. Yeah! Wow. Hello. <laughs> That'll wake you up. Um, yeah. It was a great experience. I. It was. It was really fun. It was a great time, and you were great. I, they were all great. We had a great time, and um, and you talked about earlier uh, the, uh, Pennywise, right? I think we have some photos of that too. Of yeah. Look at you. Wow. It okay. was. So uh, this is it. I guess this is it, right? Yep, it the musical parody. And you did this where? We did it in uh, at Chelsea Table and Stage. It was the off Broadway run. Wow! Oh my gosh! And was it? Uh, how would you would you describe? Was it comedic? Was it scary? Was it? How would you describe this? Comedically scary. It was. It's just like a. It's supposed to feel excitingly funny and weirdly terrifying, but you're not really scared because you're laughing and it's like a weird, it's just like a monster musical and I love it. I love the grit and I love that it's sweaty and dirty and it's, it's, it's we swear a lot and we don't give a shit. It's great. Oh my gosh, it. it's great. And by, and by the way, you look unbelievable in that makeup and that wig. Thank you. Yeah, it's cool. I don't know what it is about being a sweaty sewer monster, but I never feel more powerful. <laughs> do you, will you get to do this again? I don't know. This, this show finds rebirth in ways that always surprise me. We first did it in 2019 in LA. One, we won a bunch of awards and the reviews were incredible. And we thought, you know, like we're lucky that we built a show that had this much success and we're, you know, and, you never know if the, you know how it goes. You never know if things come back. And then we got the call that they said, Hey, do you want to do it off Broadway? And I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's been three years. I got to shake off my bones. Yeah. And so we went there and we, I was really nervous cause I've never done a show in New York mm. and uh, the reviews were incredible. They were so good that I cried. Oh, that's great. Man. That's there's nothing better. There's yeah. Nothing especially when you really put your heart into into something you know yeah and you uh, and you know you get to new york i mean new york is the epicenter of theater and it's what everybody i think is, that does theater aspires to do one day or yeah. I mean, you get there and you get to do it and then you get to have that that moment it's there is nothing better I, yeah I, that's i agree um i want to switch and i want to talk a little bit more about your personal life and 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 of course we're going to talk about blake how did, you, how did you two meet when I was a waiter, I lived here for about six months. You met on Ninja Turtles in this photo, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> those are our friends that we were at a friend's house. Those are, we don't own those. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to steal them if you would have given them to us, but he said <laughs> I didn't have them. Um, but yeah, I was a waiter and he was an assistant to uh, this guy. And they used to work in our, uh, they would work in our restaurant because Every, yeah, I mean, the amount of people on computers drinking, you know, free refills of coffee for five hours would astound everyone. Like the amount of regulars I had in that place, which mm -hmm. I still love. 
<laughs> um, and so Blake would come in there and he wanted to go on dates. And I was like, well, you know, I, I just moved to the city and I'm kind of getting my life together. I don't, I'm, I really don't know if I can date anyone right now, but it's, you know, it's, it's cool to know you. And we <laughs> hang out a little. And then he goes, yeah, we'll see about that. Cause he kept asking me to date. And so he would, you know, wait till I would get off my shifts and then we would hang out in the stoop of my apartment complex and talk, or he would wait till I got off my shift and bring me some food or I'd go hang out at his place. And it was really like this. It, he did a lot of really sweet things that really won me over. Sweet, sweet persistence. It was. <laughs> that is exactly right. How was it? How, how was it? Cause I know you guys have been together now, what, 12 years, do you say? 12? It'll be 12 years in February. Yeah. How was it? early before you you came you came out with it how was it navigating being gay in a gay relationship and disney mm -hmm. all that was there a weird navigation thing for you oh yeah i remember when you know when i first was having to change my name it was around the same time i i was i had the talk about you know are you gay and what are we going to do about this mm -hmm. and admittedly at the time hollywood was just a different i mean 10 years ago yeah. If you were gay, you you could be in under five co-star in a TV show, but they would, you know, they wouldn't really uh, the availability or the opportunity for LGBT people or anyone in most minority groups was very minimal. And so I was told you either do you either hide the fact that you're gay and change your name or you won't have opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by that, and you know, I'm working, I'm, I'm working my butt off six days a week. I've left my entire life behind. I'm 3000 miles away from home. And I, I was like, I, you know, I, I'm being told I don't have a choice here. So I talked to Blake and I said, I, you know, I have to navigate this and I don't know if you're going to want to, you don't have to stay date. You don't have to keep dating me. Cause I know nobody deserves to go through this. I don't even want to go through this. And he said, well, it's, he's like, well, I, we're going to go through it together. You're, I'm not, you're not, we're not breaking up. And I'm like, are you sure? Cause I don't know a lot of people who would choose this. Wow. And he said, no, it's, he's like, I don't want you to self-destruct and destroy yourself because of this. He's like, if I, you know, I'm with you because I care about you. I, I want you to stay safe. So that was really heartwarming. I don't think I, no one can ever fully prepare themselves for what you're going to go through in that kind of circumstance. Mm -hmm. And so everyone kept treating me like my biggest secret was that I was gay. And some people would pull me aside and try and talk to me about it. Or other people would make fun of me for the way I act or talk. And then I was like coached on how to talk, how to dress, how to, who I could hang out with, who I couldn't hang out with, how to pose mm -hmm. in pictures, how to mm -hmm. answer questions in interviews, like every top to bottom. It was, I felt it was like, how do we make you into the Hollywood leading man? And I was like, gee, okay, well, you know, and so I was navigating that and I, I, I figured if everyone thinks my biggest secret is that I'm gay, because how many actors do people talk about that in Hollywood, then I don't really care because I'm protecting the egg. Mm -hmm. And that egg is my relationship in that when I go home at night, I get to be me and I get to feel safe and I have good grounded soil that I can, because so many people end up being a flash in the pan and never working again because they completely lost who they were. Mm -hmm. They get stuck in the tabloids mm -hmm. and then they destroy themselves. And then at the end of it, you know, it's so heartbreaking to see people who never, who didn't get to have that good foundation. And that's what Blake really gave to the early, you know, portion of my career and, and the, and that part of my life. And I feel like we're so strong together now and getting to come out and be fully, authentic in our relationship and show be, you know getting to feel like here's a good example for young people of like a good healthy queer relationship with people who made it through something that's really really hard and i'm really proud of us and how far we've come oh you, uh, gary you sound that sounds so fantastic i yeah, i'm so happy for you i'm so happy for for blake i i don't know if you know that do you know that do you know did i ever tell you you know i did the very first uh movie about the aids epidemic called longtime companion do you know that movie no that's so, fascinating. and it was at a time you, you talk about a time we're talking 1991 it was at a time that if you were a straight actor and you played a gay role you could hurt your career oh you were risking everything 
Yeah, and I have a very nice. You should, I want you and Blake to ask Blake about it. I want you guys to watch the movie. It's the first feature film about the AIDS epidemic. Okay. I, I have a very beautiful, passionate kiss with John Dossett in it and mm-hmm. Brent Barrett in it. It's a, but it's a great movie. And it's a great movie, and it, and it's about. But you know, but like I said at the time, yeah, you know, I remember my manager saying you have to really think about this, and I said, oh no, no there's no question, there's no thinking. I'm doing this movie. It's so important. You very rarely get a chance as an actor in your career, not just to do something that's really credible. It was Craig Lucas and Norman Ray, but do something that can actually make a change. Mm-hmm. And that's what it did. That's what it did. It actually paved the way for Philadelphia. It paved the way for that movie. Um, well, I have, we have some photographs of you on your wedding day. Take a look. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Look at you guys. That's Alicia Silverstein, who performed your wedding. That's right. Wow. Oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you. Stunning, my friend. We had a really good day. It was it. It was a very. It on accident ended up being the hottest day of the year. Uh-huh. But it was it was more than worth it. And we had that was the third wedding date that we had <laughs> because of the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, good, because that brings us to our little game that we're going to play today. (laughs) So so we play games on the show. uh, And the game we normally play is called Remember the Lyric. And what it is, is I would sing a lyric from a show you did and a song you sing, and you'd have to come back with me to the next lyric. But we wanted to change that. So we're going to play this game for the very first time on the show with you, Mr. Clayton. And it's called... Do you know your husband? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. So I'm going to ask you some questions. And by the way, I've spoken to to Blake and he has confirmed all these answers. So (laughs) we're going to see how well you know your husband. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. What are the three places that Blake would like to travel that he hasn't visited yet? Oof. Well, that's hard because he's traveled a lot. He said that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be Italy, Greece, or the UK. Um, the Faroe Islands? Yeah, is that that's number one. Very good. Oh, you froze. We've lost you. Are you still there? Did I freeze? Oh, there you are. Oh, so yeah. wait. You're back. You raised the, the Faroe Islands and you froze. <laughs> Is it, All right. All right. So we got you. We got you back. Although you're starting to break up a little bit. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, it says I have all my bars. Maybe the site just had a little bit of a glitch. So you, the Faroe Islands, what else? Um, oh, well, I always want him to go to Croatia with me because I just really want him to go to Croatia. So, But that's more of a me thing. Um, <laughs> He spent time in Germany when he was little. I don't know if, but he, he can't have gone there. Is that one of the rules? Right. It's what, these are the okay. three that he wants to, to visit. But you got the Faroe Islands. I'm going to give you another one. That you were supposed to take your honeymoon there. Oh, Japan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he's makes dying, sense. He's dying to go to Japan. Yes. And the, and the other one the, the other one is down under, down under. It's really oh, Australia. Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Yeah. So now, so you've learned. So there are this. We're booking your tickets immediately. You're on your way. <laughs> to be fair, he's never talked to me about New Zealand. Yeah. We might want to live there one day, but oh, not there just. You go. You're good. Said, You're good. Okay. So what? Question two. What activity does Blake hate to do the most? What activity does he hate? What activity does he hate? What activity does he hate? It's a. It has to do with usually loud music. Oh, he hates going out at night. Yeah, he, he hates going to bars with, especially really loud bars. Is that right? Yeah, I mean that's true. I, anytime I go do anything nightlife, he's like, "Have fun, bye." <laughs> He did. He says you're 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 more the extrovert. He's more the introvert. And so yes. what he yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I get him out sometimes. The thing is, if you get Blake drunk, he is a very big extrovert. 
Oh yes, yeah, no. but he I, just doesn't wife, like to drink really. My wife too. I love she <laughs> a couple of cocktails and then she loves the bars out there. <laughs> oh, he'll stand on the bar if you get him drunk. <laughs> uh, what goal uh, that you talked about together as a couple that you have not yet been able to achieve? Um, a house in Iceland w that is a farm. <laughs> we want a farm in Iceland. What else would you like on that farm? Horses. What and else? Dogs. What else besides dogs or horses that usually follow dogs and horses first, but then completes a family? Oh, children. Yes, and lots of them, right? Yeah, we're hoping for like three to five. Yeah, <laughs> talking about the surrogacy for like maybe the first one or two, and then adopting the rest. That's fantastic. And tell me, uh, he doesn't know this. I said I was going to ask you because. Uh, what is your favorite boy name and your favorite girl name? Well, we both really like the name Casper. Oh, it's great. And that could and, go that could go for a boy or a girl. Well, and the yeah. And I I've always liked cuz when I was younger my mom always said if she had a daughter she'd name her Lily and that is associated also with my um with my great grandmother. Mhm. Mm and I just always thought that was a pretty name. And I haven't met a lot of people named Lily. I love that. This is this will be new to him. He'll let, he's gonna he's gonna, he's hearing this for the first time. He's not uh, gonna be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> and last question, tell me for this. Uh, what date with Blake was the most terrifying? Like a date that we went on, or like a yeah. date in the calendar? Yeah, it was a date that you went on. Like, was I scared or was he scared? I think you were scared. Oh, our first one? When I first went to his house. The, it was something that has to do with LAX and Malibu Beach. and. Oh, when I thought he was going to murder me in Malibu. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty terrifying. I, here's the thing. <laughs> I thought he was going to murder me at least twice. Oh, the first right. time is when I first went to his house and it was night. And I was I didn't realize. So you have to park. you had to park on Beverly Glen in the canyon and then walk up this hill. Right. But it was pitch black because it was winter. So it was like dark at six o'clock. And I was there at maybe like 10 o'clock at night and he was waiting at the top of the hill and there's only one street lamp that's shining down. And so I just see this, like we had been chatting and hanging out like in the restaurant, but I, you know, I only see a silhouette of a six, three giant. Cause he's, he's just like this giant buff six, three guy. And so <laughs> I looked up and I was like, well, it's either Blake or I'm legitimately about to get my throat cut. So I called my mom and I was like, you have to stay with me on the phone. Cause I'm mildly worried. And then I one of, and then, <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and so then we went on this date and he took me to that. Uh, what's it called? Where they shot the opening of Greece. Oh, uh, 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 oh gosh. Where did they shoot the opening? I see now I'm quizzing you. And we're about, we're going to get to the second game in a minute, which has to do with that. But I don't, I don't know that. Where did they shoot the, I went to the Greece premiere too. So I should know, but I don't. Oh, it was the, uh, uh, it's anyway. So he takes me to this beach and there's a long winding staircase down. It's the middle of the night. Zuma? Was it Zuma? There you get, wait, Julie, you're, muted. you're muted, Julie. You're muted. There you go. Hi. Hi, Matador Beach. Yes, El Matador. Matador Beach. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, oh. I'll be back with you in a minute. <laughs> go ahead. Matador Beach. So we were at Matador and he's walking me and he was like, all right, we're almost there. And then tells me to pause in front of this cave that's pitch black. And he, he's like, now wait there. And then walks around the corner. And I was like, <laughs> and it, so I waited a couple minutes and then I thought like he's preparing the body bag because I didn't know him that well yet. And so I started untying my shoes to be prepared to run away. <laughs> this is hysterical. And so he, he sees me untying my shoes. And I think at first he thought it was the beach to, to like not get sand. I don't know. So I was like getting ready to run and he's like, all right, we're ready now. And I was like on my way to, I literally like, I had like, heel to the ground getting ready oh my, like my arm was up and he takes me around the corner and ended up being really sweet he put out this whole picnic blanket and had candles in the sand yep. it was very sweet and and uh 
and the boy and he was going to propose right in an ice cave or, or something like that wasn't that going to happen too oh well that was when we were in iceland getting engaged oh he, that's right all right i got i got it confused okay oh that's okay i yeah. just i kept guessing when he when he was going to propose and then oh, he that's kept, right that's right he kept trying to throw you off but he kept but you kept you figuring it out or something like that yeah i just kept ruining it i was like so you're gonna propose there and he was like stop ruining this and i'm like i can't help <laughs> it that you're not surprising me you guys have a fantastic relationship my friend Thank i mean you. You, it really sounds beautiful i mean it really does and um and i have to tell you talking to him on the phone he's terrific he yeah was, he was really really helpful and and i got to learn other things about you and so now when you guys by the way why were you in Nashville that night, that day when we did I, that thing? So I've been flying in all year, actually. I'm working on music, um, and I no one knows that yet. So that, well, yeah. not not with that you've been working on music or that you've been flying to Nashville. I now know, and now the, phone, the phone's going to be ringing. Is it, you're going to call <laughs> yeah. me, aren't you? We're going to have. Also, gonna, you're saying you're doing all this theater. I don't want to do a one man show. I want to do a musical. Let's do a musical. Okay, I have parts for you. Let's come do a music. We do musicals. All that's what we do. Okay. So we're gonna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know you're a manager too. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do. We, we play. We play another game on this show. By the way, you, what a wonderful. Uh, it's so great to connect with you, man. You it's just so you're so you're great. Thank you're you so, so much. You know, I, we we got to work together, but you know how it is working together. You get thrown into a thing and rehearsals and blah blah, and then you're in a dressing room getting ready. It's all about the show. But to get to talk to you and to get to know about your life and stuff, it's just awesome. You're terrific. Well, I've always said I've thought that you have always been a stand-up person. We uh, multiple times I've talked about you and your family and different occasions and how wonderful you and all of like everyone because your family came to the show too and they were all equally as kind and gracious and like. What a great example of kind, successful people. Thank you. That means more to me than anything. I said to my, I said to my children, if, I, if I'm a good husband and I'm a good father and people at my funeral say he was a really nice guy, I did my work. Yeah. <laughs> I succeeded. Uh, we play another little game on this show. It's called You Become the Host, which means you get to ask me one question, only one. And I'm not going to even tell you about what some guests have asked me, but you get to ask me one question, any question, that stirs your curiosity. Oh, this has got to be a good, it's got to be a good one then. <laughs> um, what is, so with, actually, okay. So when you were younger, what's a, let's like a, what's a, like a funny, weird circumstance or happenstance that happened to you because you know because you've done so many incredible things what's like a weird thing that happened that no one's ever gotten to hear about oh my gosh <laughs> it's a great question no one's ever even gotten near a question like that okay well this is what i'll say there's been a mil there's been a lot of them you know that's why uh, it's exciting because then you get to be like wait, you know pick your favorite yeah, my mind's going like this i mean uh, what I will say, I mean, there's been a lot, and obviously because of privilege and celebrity, you get you get sort of open to all those things. But I want to say something that I think is so real about like family and just like we're like the same as anybody else. Is, it's my brothers and I. You know, we had sibling rivalry. There were we grew up in, and Sean and I are the closest in age, and he tortured me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he tortured me. So I'm going to say something that we, he did to me as a kid that a lot of maybe siblings never did, but he was cruel. So when I was probably about seven or eight, and he's three years my, my older than I am, you know, he used to pick on me and used to kind of beat me up and stuff like that. And I had really long hair. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, and it was until I got bigger than him, which was about 12. And then that, that went to, but there was a time he would, what he would do is he put, he put me down and he'd stand on my hair and pin my head against the ground. And you know when you have orange juice or something like in your, and you can make your saliva go you oh yeah you you know milk something that like you know coagulates together. yeah yeah so what he would do he'd stand on my hair and then he'd hit me in the thigh like a Charlie horse so I would scream and then he'd make the saliva go you 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 
until I would scream and then it would either hit me here or hit me there. Or gosh, no. So oh my God. That was, <laughs> so that was a little personal insight about what it was like to, and, but there are a million there. Are, oh gosh. We'll talk more. I'm so a, glad I asked you that question. What a great <laughs> question. <laughs> Sean, of course, is now going to say, I'll never talk to you again. Uh, <laughs> you have been a fantastic guest, my friend. Thank you so much for doing the show. And now that I know that you're in Nashville, I'm serious. Uh, I'm going to get your personal phone number. We won't do it on there. And I'm going to call you. You're going to call me when you come back. And we're going to hang out. And I will get you in a musical. I'm going to be back in the beginning of December. Let's say hi. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Garrett, for doing the show. You're awesome. Thank you for having me. This has been so much fun. Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. We're gonna and we're gonna get you in a show. Maybe, maybe even I can get something from you, maybe even in April. So we'll talk about that. Okay. All right, pal. Great to see you. Great to see you. And I will and we'll be in touch very soon. Yes, Thank please. All right. Bye. Bye. Julie, come back to me. It's a song from On a Clear Day. Hear my voice where you are. Take a train, steal a car. I was wondering when you were going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to grab a star. Come back to me. Uh, isn't he unbelievable? Oh, my gosh. What a dream. He's so sweet. And you know what What really stuck with me was his gratitude. Unbelievable. I, I just love people who are genuinely and sincerely grateful, and he is. And that's it. It's It shows. It shows. And it's, yeah. It yeah. Shows. It's really <laughs> lovely. Yeah. And like I said, you know, I, you know, we, we got thrown into working together and it was great and he was great in the show and, and all that, but then you don't get to really know somebody in this last hour. I got to really, he's, he's terrific. Gosh. I mean, yeah. Um, and so talented. His voice is ridiculous. I know. So I know. Yeah. I'm going to get him in a musical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's, um, let's talk about um, what we got coming up on studio 10. So we do have Christmas Carol with Mark Cabus. It's a one-man Christmas Carol. There it is. It's at the Franklin Theater on December 10th and 11th. It's almost sold out. You have to get tickets to this. Mark Cabus is unbelievable. He plays 18 characters. We did it last year. It was hugely successful. He is so brilliant. Get your tickets. There's very few le left. Please uh, call up or get them online. You can get them at studio10.org. And then New Year's Eve, the first time that the Harpeth Hotel and, and uh, Studio 10 are combining. We're doing an evening with John Mark Magaha. He is an incredible singer. He does Stevie Wonder and Nat King Cole. He's an amazing singer and artist. There's gonna have a huge dinner beforehand. We get to see the show and then there's a party with a band and stuff and we're gonna do dessert and we're gonna watch, we're gonna bring in Nashville, but we're gonna bring it to Frank when the ball comes down at 12. So it's gonna be an incredible evening. Those are the things we got going. Um, and, and the season? I'm sorry? Your season is continuing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the new year. You yes, run a theater, course. my friend. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, I keep going. Yeah, I got to get to January 1st. Yes, after our, our On the Road, as we as you see with the suitcase, season continues with Smoke on the Mountain. Uh, you can get your tickets for that. It's an We have an incredible cast, all from Tennessee. They're here. It's the stars of Tennessee are in that show. And then, of course, we got Here You Come Again, which is the brand new Dolly Parton musical with all of her music. And that, too, will be at the Franklin Theater. Again, the reason we're in the suitcase, guys, is because we've been on the road this season, different venues, T Tennessee Performing Arts Center. We're at the Historic Sanctuary in Franklin and we're at the Franklin Theater. But next season, next season, we have our own theater. And I'm going to tell you all about that as we get and the season's there. Jules, do you have anything that you got to say? Uh, no, I, I think I think we've had a great show tonight. Super excited about it. And uh, we'll see you in December. We will see you in December. For Julie, our holiday thank show. Thank you for everything My you pleasure. do. You're the best. Love you so. Thank you, guys. That's our show. Good night. Have a great, great evening. And thank you, Garrett Clayton, again. Good night.